Go for it. Greetings, Aqua fam. Ben Aqua here. It's your boy. The holiday episode begins now. Psych. John Ross Reyes, uh, Nam Dudes, check him out. Ben Aqua, obviously, the real Ben Aqua. Or am I? I don't know. Everybody and their dog on YouTube has an Osmo Pocket, and I really couldn't resist the charm. It is a tiny little robot penis looking thing. The quality is pretty good on this. Overall to me, it looks like phone footage, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing. What do you think about the Osmo Pocket so far? It's pretty good. It's small, it's cute, it's adorable. Oh, what's it's up? Following... Little active track? Is it gonna... Uh... <laughs> hey! Yo, this is my channel! Oh, shit. <laughs> so, I'm just gonna track my face real quick. It's on my face. Cool. I feel like there's already like enough videos on YouTube just showcasing what the actual features and specs and stuff of this camera are. But what I am gonna do is just show you some real world examples of what this camera is capable of. The face tracking mode that I'm doing right now and kind of exaggerating how ridiculous it is, is pretty cool and follows me pretty well. It seems like the autofocus is kind of hit or miss, especially in low light. The audio is pretty decent if you're in a situation like this where you're just kind of in a room. But once you step outside, just even just a little bit of wind noise, will make your audio sound really tinny and weird. For 349, like, I think this camera is an amazing, amazing value. Let's go through some examples of what I shot in lots of different types of situations so you can see what the real world view of the Osmo Pocket is actually like. So one of my first impressions of the Osmo Pocket is this thing is indeed super small as everybody has been saying. I love that it fits really tiny in your hand and it seems pretty stable. The footage itself looks to me, it's definitely stabilized but um, you definitely see some jitters some from pretty basic hand movements. So it's definitely not like the most stable footage I've ever seen in my life. But for 349 and the quality you get in 4K 60p, I mean, it's just, it's pretty incredible. But, um, yeah, you're seeing the Osmo Pocket right now. I have it on face tracking mode, so I'm shooting um, with kind of a weird light situation where the sun's actually behind me. So if I turn around here, so now the sun is right in my eyeballs. But the face tracking seems like it's working pretty well. If I twist my body around, it follows me pretty well here, so that part is really cool. I'm walk back towards my car so I don't get towed. Beautiful day, but super windy, so this is this will be a good test. Oh my god, we got Spider-Man. Hold, hold up. What's up, man? What is going on right now? Is this, what is this, a video? Yeah. What do you have to say to YouTube? Uh, Alex Young's back on or I'm gonna... You're gonna have to pay Spider-Man the price. He has way more views than you do. That's probably true. But I back Alex Jones 100% and Donald Trump 100%. You go, Spidey. Thank you very much. High five. Screw you, YouTube. Now you gotta deal with Spider-Man. I'm more famous than Jesus, so it's it's on now. This will be a satisfying video for everybody that is irrationally triggered by electric scooters everywhere. Look at these things. I locked the focus on this red object in the middle. I just drew a square around it, and I'm just gonna see how well the Osmo Pocket does at following this. Looks like it's doing pretty well. Following, following, following. I was trying to think of like who this camera could be for. One thing that came to mind is, let's say you have an older smartphone, like an iPhone 5 or something, something where you want like some even juicier 4K footage. I think the Osmo Pocket could actually fill in the gap for people that have like an older phone and they're not ready to upgrade to like the iPhone 10s or whatever the latest thing is when this video comes out. So I'm not a big fan of having to plug it into my phone anytime I want to like change one of the settings. So let's just plug it in so you can see what I'm talking about here. So when you plug it into your phone, one thing that kind of irks me about this camera already is you can't just change it to 24 frames per second on the device itself. It only enables 30 and 60 frames per second when you're shooting in 4K. So in order to get 24 frames per second, which is what I shoot most of my videos in, you got to enable this pro mode up here. Then all of a sudden when you tap on this, it enables 24 frames per second. So that's cool. And then you can actually disengage your phone and shoot stuff in, in 24 frames per second. Once your Osmo Pocket 
is stuck in this mode though at 24 frames per second. If you want to change any other settings, you can't change the frame rate, you can't take photos, you can't change it to slow-mo unless you exit pro mode. So to get back into 24 frames per second, you have to plug it back into your phone, change it back to pro mode, and it's kind of annoying. I hope DJI fixes this in an upcoming firmware update. So one thing I definitely wanted to test is the autofocus because that seems to be like a huge issue. And this does have, I did update the firmware to the latest version, which is apparently was supposed to fix a lot of the autofocus issues, but here's a real world test as we call it here in the business. See how it does. Probably about maybe five or six inches away from these leaves right here. Is it able to focus? It's actually focused. Let's try one of those like focused here. Focus on the background. Focus here. Here. Yeah. No. Got it. Focus on the background. So autofocus does work, but it's not the best. It's not gonna be like Canon or Sony level. It does make me a little nervous that the camera attached to the phone, it's just kind of dangling on there. Like it, it feels pretty sturdy in the hand, but it does feel like any sudden movement my phone could just rip out and, or the Osmo Pocket could fly out of my hand. It's a little, it, it's a little precarious, but overall the technology is amazing and I'm just like astounded. You can get this kind of quality with this level of stabilization for 350, that's amazing. Let's test out the camera. It's like almost sunset behind me and I'm testing out how the Osmo Pocket does in almost low light kind of situation. There's like these kind of micro jitters that I've been seeing in a lot of other YouTubers videos about the Osmo Pocket where the scene behind them will be like super stable but then the person in the frame is like bobbing up and down and it looks kind of weird and unnatural. What do y'all think in the comments? Uh, let me know. All right, let's do an autofocus test with a kind of generic looking background. And I'm gonna stick my hand in here randomly. Let's see if it focuses on it. And this is a low light autofocus test, by the way. Focus, no? Is it gonna focus? Wow, awesome. Beautiful. Did Panasonic make this autofocus system? Oh, yeah, I said it. Let's try that one more time. I can see on the screen it's sensing that there's something else in the frame. My hand is now maybe five inches away from the camera. Nope. Huh? This seems like this would be an easy autofocus situation even in low light. But hopefully a firmware update will address this issue. Is this creepy just like walking up to some random person's house? and filming their nativity scene. So here's that same house, now that the sun has gone down a little bit more, same nativity scene. Jesus is still there, I believe. What do you think? How's the noise level? Is it sharp? Is it focused? Looks pretty good here on the phone. Decent, maybe a little bit blurry. So there are two design flaws that I think are really, really weirdly done here. And one of them is the microphone, which you can see right here. It's front facing, which is good if you're like in selfie mode. But once you flip the camera around to shoot what's away from you, the audio is still coming from the front facing part of the camera, meaning it's gonna get your voice really well. But if somebody's on the other side of the camera, you're not going to hear them very well. You're going to hear a kind of a muffled version of them and then your nostrils and stuff making weird noises. So I wish there was another mic on the other side of the camera picking up what's going on over there and then maybe making some kind of stereo composite. That would be really cool. And another design flaw I think is the USB-C charging port at the bottom is really cool except if you're charging the Osmo Pocket you obviously can't set this down on a table so if you're going to be shooting like a longer scene for example and you want to charge it while recording, you can't do that right now unless you kind of rig it to something else using some duct tape or something. But as is, this is kind of a weird clunky design and also everyone's been talking about this, I agree. There's no threading right here for attaching it to a simple tripod and it's kind of like they're gonna make you buy another accessory which kind of adds more weight, it adds more physical bulk to this camera that's already supposed to fit in your pocket so kind of weird design choices there and definitely like one of the biggest flaws 
of the camera. I had the brilliant idea to go to Trader Joe's like five minutes before they close. I hate, I hate being that guy. I made it. We're here. I can't believe I made it here in time, but I have like three minutes left. I think I got everything I need. Let's head to the register. This is a really not that interesting vlog. <laughs> got my chips. So it looks like even in pretty low light situations, the Osmo Pocket is able to pick up my face pretty well. So it's a pretty foggy evening here in Austin, Texas. The screen on this little thing is so tiny I can't really see what's going on, but is it grainy? Does it look good? How does this look? I'm trying to use just like available light, street lights. Like a, this is a real vlog in real life situations. That's what it actually looks like, just kind of plug and play. I don't really like that it relies so much on the phone. Like it's so small and cute and tiny that I wish it just had more functions on here, just baked into it where I didn't have to like plug it into my phone to enable the pro features. Like why not just put the pro features in the actual camera? Overall, I'm really attracted to smaller devices that are just getting so much more powerful these days. I mean, you couldn't get a camera that had this many features even like a year ago at this price level. Like 350 for this is kind of insane. I still shoot with my iPhone 10 a lot, and the quality of the Osmo Pocket is about the same as the iPhone 10. Even though it does have the gimbal stabilization goodness, the iPhone 10 still holds up super well, even at the end of 2018. Anyway, what do y'all think of the footage? What do you think of the Osmo Pocket? Do you think it's overrated? Do you think it's the best thing since sliced YouTube, but I wanna hear what you think, so let me know in the comments. I think this is really cool. I think it has a lot of potential. I think it definitely needs some firmware and hardware upgrades, but for a first generation product, this is really impressive. If you like this video, smash that like button, subscribe to me if you're not already, notification bell, you know what to do. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.